Hi everyone, I'm going to be reading chapter 26 of Gangster Granny. Chapter 26, A Figure in the Dark. A long winding corridor stretched out ahead of them. This was where the tourists from around the world would queue for hours to see the crown jewels. The old lady and her grandson tiptoed their way silently along it, dripping smelly icy water from the Thames in their wake. Finally, they turned a corner into the main room where all the jewels were kept. Like the sun bursting through the clouds on a grey day, the jewels illuminated Ben and Granny's face. The pair of thieves stopped in awe. Their mouths fell open as they looked at the treasures laid out before them. They were more magnificent than anyone could imagine. It truly was the most superb collection of precious objects in the world. Dear reader, not only were they beautiful and priceless, they symbolised hundreds of years of history. There were a number of royal crowns. Sir Edward's crown, with which the new king or queen is crowned by the Archbishop of Canterbury during the coronation ceremony. It is made of gold and decorated with sapphires and topazes, proper bling. The imperial state crown, in which were set in an incredible 3,000 gems, including a second star of Africa. That's the largest stone cut from the largest diamond ever found. No, I don't know where the first star is. The breathtaking imperial crown of India, set with around 6,000 diamonds and magnificent rubies and emeralds. Unfortunately, not in my size. The 12th century gold anointing spoon was used to anoint the king or queen with a holy oil, not to be used for eating cocoa pops. Not forgetting the ampulla, a gold flask in the form of an eagle which contains that holy oil, like a really posh thermos flask. And finally, the famous orb and scepters. That's a lot of gear. If the crown jewels were featured in an Argos catalogue, they would probably look something like this. Can you see it? Granny took out her rolled up supermarket carrier bag she kept in her handbag, ready to put the crown jewels in. Right, we just need to break through this glass, she whispered. Ben looked at her with disbelief. Eh, I'm not sure we're going to get all these jewels in there. Well, Sorry, dear, she whispered back. You have to pay five pence for plastic bags at the shops these days, so I only bought one. The glass was inches thick. Bulletproof. Ben had smuggled a few compound chemicals out of his science class and combined them to go kabim. I've set a light. They stuck the chemicals to the glass with some blue tack. Granny attached one end of the ball of pink wool to the blue tack. Blue would be the perfect fuse. Then she produced some matches. They just needed to make sure that they were far enough away from the explosion, otherwise they might be blown up too. Right, Ben whispered Granny. Let's go as far away from these glasses as we can. The pair retreated around a wall, unravelling the pink wool as they went. Do you want to light the fuse? said Granny. Ben nodded. He really wanted to, but his hands were trembling so much with excitement, he didn't know if he could. Ben opened the matchbox. There was only two matches inside. He went to strike the first, but his hands were shaking so much, it broke in two when he did. Oh dear, whispered Granny. Have another go. Ben picked up the second match. He tried to strike it, but nothing happened. Some river water must have leaked out of the sleeve of his wetsuit. Now both the match and the matchbox were soaking wet. <gasps> no, cried Ben in desperation. Mum and Dad were right. I'm useless. I can't even light a match. Granny put her arms around her grandson. As he cuddled their wetsuit squeaked a little. Don't talk like that, Ben. You're an amazing young man. You really are. Since we've been spending so much time together, I'm a hundred times happier than I could ever say. Really, said Ben. Really, replied Granny. And you're so very clever. You planned this whole extraordinary heist yourself. And you're only 11 years old. I'm nearly 12, said Ben. Granny chuckled. But you get my point, dear. 
How many other children your age could plan something as daring as this? But we weren't going to steal the crown jewels now, so it's all been a massive waste of time. Not over yet, said Granny as she pulled out a tin of cabbage soup from her handbag. We can always try some good old-fashioned brute force. Granny handed the tin to her grandson. Ben took it with a smile. They walked over to the cabinet. Here goes, said Ben. He swung back the tin to strike the glass. Please don't, said a voice from the shadows. Ben and Granny froze in terror. Was it a ghost? Who's there? Ben called out. The figure stepped out into the light. It was the Queen. I wonder what's going to happen next. That's the end of the chapter. Thanks for listening. Bye.